Here we have an optimization problem about designing a box. It says two squares of length x are cut out of adjacent corners of an 18 by 18 inch piece of cardboard and two rectangles of length 9 inches and width x are cut out of the corner of the other two corners of the cardboard. See the figure. Right, and we really want to work off the figure here. These words can get very disorienting, but let's finish it out. The resulting piece of cardboard is then folded along the dashed lines to form an enclosed box. Find the dimensions and the volume of the largest box that can be formed this way. Well, you can imagine that finding the largest box that can be made from a given square of cardboard would be a hugely important question for various shipping companies and whatnot to answer. So people are solving these optimization problems out in the world every day, and they get very complicated, and of course you get computers involved in all kinds of things. Right, you can study optimization. You can make a whole career out of this, optimizing various things. In this case, we're looking at a box. The key to these box problems, there's a whole class of these problems where you're cutting things out of a box and folding it up to complete the box, is to work very carefully off the figure. And you want to consider both the beginning shape, where you have the flat piece of cardboard laid out, and the one where it's all folded together. So let's make sure we understand what's happening here. We're cutting out the corners here, so this darker part is being cut out, and, and then we're folding these edges up, right? So this is going to make the base of the box. We cut out those corners and we fold those up. What happens up here, we cut out this entire strip and then fold this part up, and then this part becomes the lid. We fold this lid all the way across, right? So we're, we're creating this box here on the right out of that piece of cardboard with the corners cut out of it. But the key is to label more. So it's imp very important to label everything you possibly can in these. So let's see, we have X already, so that tells me that this is going to be X as well. We have X here and X here. Now over on our folded up box, this X is going to be the height, right? Because we're folding these flaps up, that gives us the height of the box. So X there, X there, right? X. And let's see, what else can we get? Well, it tells us that this is an 18 by 18 piece of cardboard. So then if it gives us nine here up from the halfway point up to the top, this bottom part must also be nine all the way up and down. So then when we subtract out X, if we just look at this piece right here that gets folded out, that must be nine minus X. Similarly, this whole distance down here since it's an 18 by 18, this whole distance must be 18. So then this little bit right down here must be 18 minus the two corners that were taken out, 2x. How does that translate over to our box? And this is really the crux of the whole problem. Once you get this labeling part down, the rest of it is just doing a little bit of calculus, but it's not as bad as it seems. All right, so we have this long length here of 18 minus 2x there and then this width here is 9 minus x. Okay so this is the key. Labeling the box like that is the key to these kinds of exercises. Because we can work off that folded up and labeled box now and very quickly get the volume and yeah the calculus is kind of tedious but at least it's doable. Whereas if you don't carefully do this step right up front you basically have no way of finishing out the problem. At least it's, it's very rare. Okay, so moving forward, we have our goal, maximize the volume. So then we need our ob objective function, which gives us an equation for volume. Well, remember, volume for a cuboid like this is base times width times height. So we ha what do we have? We have 18 minus 2x, so we'll call that the base. It doesn't really matter, actually. Times width, we'll call that 9 minus x. And then the height, in this case, is x. So in this example, we essentially took the constraint as part of the problem. So instead of doing base times width times height and all of that, we already took into account the constraint. What's the constraint? Well, this diagram that they gave us was the constraint. So it's already factored in when we do our volume here on the folded up box. So we don't need, right now need a separate equation to find the constraint because we only have one variable that we're working with. So that's the good news. Let's take the derivative of this volume and see what we get. Well, I really don't want to use a triple product rule, so I'm going to distribute some things here so I can just take a simpler derivative. So I'm going to distribute this x through, 
That gives me the 18 minus 2x is still holding on in the front. And we have times 9x minus x squared. And here it's just going to be a lot of computation. Let's foil this together. Let's see, 18 times 9, 162. So we have 162x. So I'm just foiling outside minus 18x squared inside minus 18 x squared again and times last is plus 2 x cubed well we can simplify that a little bit by just combining these two middle terms that gives us 162 x minus 36 x squared plus 2 x cubed now we're ready for the derivative which we can do without any product rule or anything like that now so we have 162 minus 72x plus 6x squared. And that's what we want to set equal to 0 and solve. Solving this will give us our critical points. Note that we can factor a 6 out of that. That makes life a lot easier. Always try to factor out something before you factor your terms or solve anything. So let's see. Factoring out a 6 and rearranging a little bit gives x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals 0. Finally, we can factor this down. We have 6, and we'll have some factors here. How about x and x? Um, 27, how about minus 9 minus 3 equals 0, which gives us x equals 9. That is a 9, by the way. It doesn't look much like a 9. 9 and 3. Now, one of these cases is absurd. Which one? Well, 9. If we cut 9 out of x, what we're doing is cutting out, we're just cutting the entire box away, right? We're cutting a corner out of the box so big, right, that it's a quarter of the box. So imagine cutting a corner of length 9 out of it. Okay, then we cut each corner out that way. There's not going to be nothing left of our box. So 9 is going to be the minimum, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the maximum. So we're going to ditch that, and it must be x equals 3 that gives us our maximum. Okay, now we're ready for our dimensions of our box. We know that our height is 3, so I'll just say 3 inches by... Okay, moving up here, this is our original volume equation. Actually, okay, let's just look at our original box drawing here. We have x. Our next one is 9 minus x, so 9 minus 3 is 6 inches. So we'll say 6 inches by... Our last one is... 18 minus 2x, so that's 18 minus 6, which is 12. So 3 by 6 by 12 inches. So by 12 inches is the size of our box of maximum volume obtained using this method of cutting out corners and folding up flaps. Now, you'll see a lot of variations on this problem, right? You might have an open top, so we're just folding up and accounting for the sides and leaving the top open. You might have sides that, that use a different material and thus cost more than the base or something like that. There are all kinds of these, but the important thing is to carefully label your initial picture and label your folded up box. If you do that just right, then you can go right off your illustration and you don't need to think too much about all the things happening. You just do the calculus, get it done with, find your critical points, and you're good to go.